So they're just pictures from, you know, 10 years of life, like a boyfriend, a moment. I sort of edited with like, you know, the thoughts that that sort of looks like some road movie picture. I don't know, like there's poetry in everyday life. This was a place in LA that, this is one of the key images of my early career in 1990. I like the way pictures look when you read like a, a novel about a serial killer or a movie star biography or something and it would show you like this is where they lived. <laughs> like those kind of photographs interest me. And I felt like this was a trip to LA and on my first trip to LA it was very important for me because I tend to make these little pilgrimages. This is the apartment building where Janis Joplin died. So I went there and I took this picture and I just took the picture to take the picture. I didn't think like, and then I'm going to make an artwork out of it. But when it came back from this whole process, I was like, ah, that's exactly what I want a picture to look like. Somewhere. And that was one of my pictures. Little things like this, like the everyday mundane, the sort of like poetry of everyday living, like in the East Village. Like to me, this seems like. Uh, you know, a real symbol of abundance at the time. We had enough money for mango, and a quarter milk, and like a couple, you know, some cherries. So it seemed like a good day. It looked pretty in the light. L.A. I never saw roses like that before. You know, a dumb picture that my mother would take of like, oh, look, the tree fell over in the hurricane. But it, I don't know. There was something I felt about it. This picture, I went on a very good vacation with rich people uh, at the time, and it was a friend of mine, and I had the pool, and I was like, that's gonna look like a picture of Jack. Like, when I took it, I was like, I'm gonna make this look like a picture of Jackie O, like, with a telephoto lens. I feel like I succeeded. Went to LA, the next door neighbor girl was going for a um, casting for the TV movie of Lucy's Life. And, it was somehow, that when, this, when this picture came back to me as just even a snapshot, I knew I had something because like it spoke to me about everything I liked, which was like, it really looked like Lucy, but we really know it's not. And I took it, and it's 1990, and even if it's just a picture of a girl who wants to look like Lucy, I don't know, I just loved everything about it. So it was included in this first thing. And what, you know, I just wanted to make sure there was a good picture of me from my youth. <laughs> um, uh, stuff like this. It's just like cinematic. It's America. It's like stuff I like, like a cheap little honky tonk sort of situation. Um, so, having, having spent all my money on these 40 photographs, which you sell like 10 of or something. Uh, and I got, like, people like them. The gallery liked them, the Village Voice liked them, people liked them, I was all like jazzed up. But I didn't have any money. And so, but I still had a paper and pencil, and I felt um, like I had more to express somehow. So I, I went and did, like, sort of the, the subtitles for this whole life you've just seen, which is one of, like, vagrancy, and it's somehow, like, uh, itinerancy. And, 50s music, cigarettes, and stuff like that. So I just made these. These drawings are about eight and a half by 11, and a sheet of paper, a pencil, and an eraser. Um, and it was sort of like what? I don't know. I wish you could blow this one up. Can you see it? It's like a tiny little girl smoking a cigarette and drinking a cup of coffee. Vaguely based on the female figure in a Nighthawks at the diner. You know, it's just sort of like a sketch from memory. Part. Very tiny on the page, very depressed. Um, I drew my hand a lot at that time. And it got into a language, and I'm sort of a former teen teenage poet, kind of like the corner of a room. Okay, so then, and the drawings, believe it or not, these aren't the best ones, but they were the ones I had pictures of. Uh, 
The drawing sort of took off in a way in that they were selling hand over fist at $75 a piece. You know, maybe $150 a piece and I got $75, which to me seemed like really good. And maybe I had, maybe they sold like 20 of them and I had $1,500. And I felt very like, oh, I paid for them. <laughs> Photographs, money to spend, people are responding, like if, you know, people are responding, I liked it. And uh, so I got a little more and more uh, self confident. And one day, I don't know if you people remember, um, it's still there on Houston Street, but it used to be a bigger, like, open market, flea market tents of Houston and around 2nd Street, 2nd Avenue. And I would walk from where I lived in the Lower East Side to the subway to get to the 42nd Street. The 42nd Street at that time was being shut down to make way for what it is now. So all the stuff was coming from 42nd Street right down to the East Village and sold in an open market. And I walked in one day, these letters were there. I mean, there was piles of them, but I pulled these letters out. And I sort of, you know, whatever, I just, Put it on the. I was like, oh look, I could spell this. <clears throat> and I think they wanted forty dollars, like ten bucks a piece of them, which was not inconsiderable to me. So I sort of was like, I was with my friend, and I was like, I have a feeling if I bought these for forty dollars, I could sell it for much more next week. That's the way my life is going. I don't know. Let's do. It's like I'm buying it. And then. Um, <coughs> A week later, I was able to sell it. You know, somebody sold it for me for $1,500, so I felt like you know, it, was, um, it was a big deal. And uh, then everything else just sort of like followed suit. And I, then I went back the next week and bought a whole box of them. And uh, I bought the whole crate, and I just put it up, pulled it out, and set it up on the floor of the studio. And I was, you know, I, I'm not whatever, like Dada or poet, poetry or something like this. So this is the first one I made after stay was this. And I thought sort of like, this will go back and make spelling. I don't know. It has a system to me somehow. If you, you know, like the word God sort of radiates in three points from the center. And I don't know, you can make words. And I, it was 1991. I was 31 years old. That was the only thing I fucked with in pulling them out. I pulled them out. I knew how many there were. I knew what I was going to do. And I knew since there were that numeral, I had to put it somewhere so I made it. Oddly, it was my purpose. 